Welcome everybody, uh, my name is Gabrielle Kennedy. I am the Editor-in-Chief of Jam Magazine. And today we're going to be talking to some of the 2023 participants of Glue Amsterdam. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, say welcome to Yamuna Fuzani. Are you there? Yes, hi. Hello, hi, hi. Um, so I thought we'd start today by you just introducing uh, a little bit about yourself and your work to the audience. Okay, uh, so my name is Yamuna Fazani, and I am British, Italian and based in The Hague. I graduated from the Royal Academy of Arts and I specialize in textile design. I graduated from the fashion and textile uh, department and since then I've just been, yeah, uh, continuing my practice. I specialize in knitwear and um, knitted textiles, as well as recently, more recently, I've been moving more towards public art as well, which is really exciting. So uh, looking at the your work and at the, at the pieces of textiles, would mm -hmm. you say that your work is research-based and how would you describe your research process? Yeah, so... Um, Definitely my work is very research based. I would say that my entire work, I always say this like as a kind of little uh, tagline or something, that my work is a love letter to my community always. And also the community being the LGBTQ plus community and more directly the ballroom scene, which is a community that I'm part of and have been part of for almost seven years now um, and yeah so my, my work is always kind of inspired by this community but also inspired by me wanting to create my own queer utopia which is very vague but I think it kind of is a big umbrella uh, term that kind of um, fits in every single element of my practice whether it be the uh, public art which is quite new, uh, the curation of events which is something that I've been doing for many years, uh, the community work and activism that I do and the textile art so and fashion so like it's it's very broad but um, yeah and art direction everything is very uh, but it all kind of falls under this umbrella let's say of creating this utopia that fits in. Um. Yeah. In reading your text, I came across this idea of the, the ballroom community, the ball community, yes. and yeah. I, I wasn't familiar with it. Can you explain what it is and also how you became a member of it or how you discovered it? Yeah, it's a really nice story, actually. I'll, I'll, I love to tell it, so I'll tell it. Um, uh, so basically, I, I was graduating from Kabika, uh, from the Royal Academy of Art. This was in 2016. And um, I wanted to do a campaign because when I graduated, I graduated with a fashion collection and I made these socks, which had like these vinyl prints on them, which had like my logo and words and things. And everyone loved the socks. They were like, oh, we want a pair of socks. And at the time, there was also the... Um, like crisis and uh, war happening in Syria. So there was a lot of refugees coming to Europe, of course. And um, I was really, you know, when you have these crises happening in the world, you always feel really helpless. And also um, a lot of, yeah, you feel like, what can I do in this situation? It's like really, really sad and obviously devastating and everything. And um, I found this charity that I really, really liked and it was uh, called the Miles Project in Berlin and they were supporting uh, refugees, like LGBTQ plus refugees. And I wanted to raise money for that. So I did this small campaign. It was like really micro, like just doing something and I wanted to do a campaign where I sold the socks and then all the profits went to that charity so I wanted to make a video so I did an open call for models and someone from the ballroom scene came to the open call and they started voguing and dancing at this um, sort of open call uh, audition for the video and I was completely blown away by the dancing and the and and um, the energy that they had, and I was just like, "Who are you? Where did you come from?" And like, let's be best friends forever. So mm -hmm. they um, they took me to a ball, which is um, yeah, an event, which is a competition with lots of different categories, and it's um, the ballroom scene started in the like 
70s, 80s in Harlem, New York. And there's this very famous documentary called Paris is Burning, which like I watched as a kid and I just thought it was so incredible. Like as a queer kid, I was like looking for, um, you know, things to watch. And this documentary that came out in the 80s or 90s, it was like, Um, showing the houses and the categories and the whole culture, which is this underground scene. And I didn't know that it existed in Europe. So then when someone came to my casting, who was actually from the community, I just sort of latched on to dear life. And I was like, I just want to be where you are. And so they took me to balls and um, it all kind of grew from there. So that was uh, seven, like almost seven years ago. And does it exist in other European cities as well? Yes, everywhere. It's it's like since it's in, in Europe, the scene is growing like exponentially. So back in uh, 2016, when I was going to the balls, they were really small. So a lot of people from like Europe would travel to other to like wherever there was a ball. Like I would travel a lot to uh, Berlin, to Paris. Paris is like the capital um, of the ballroom scene uh, in Europe. So we or go to Paris always for like the balls. Um, I was traveling to London as well uh, to walk a ball, but now there's so many balls happening. Um, the pioneer of the ballroom scene in the Netherlands is uh, Amber Vineyard, who is, um, yeah, the sort of trailblazer of uh, bringing the ballroom scene to uh, to the Netherlands, which is really cool. It's, it's fantastic how you seem to have yeah. been able to incorporate all your thinking into this output. Obviously, KBK has gone through quite a lot of turmoil in recent years. How, oh, yeah. how did you find the culture there with regards to what you wanted to do, what you needed, what your thinking was, and post-graduation? I mean, it sounds like it worked really effectively for you. I think um, for me, like, I can't really say much about recent years because I'm just not there um even though I still live in the Hague but I travel a lot and I don't really uh go to the school that much um because yeah but but it's definitely changed like the school has changed a lot uh but for me like finding community after graduation was really really effective um in order to give me deadlines because I think once you graduate um you have this sometimes you have expectations that people are waiting for you or that um, there's a lot of things after graduation, but I feel like you have to sort of create that yourself. Um, so that was really helpful. Like the ballrooms, the balls, the events gave me deadlines because I was making outfits for people. And um, yeah, it, it helped me to continue to create uh, and gave me a lot of inspiration, of course. So you talk about how queer communities have been laboratory for radical cultural innovation throughout history. And what I'm interested in is with your garments, how do you manage to so seamlessly fit together your politics and activism with your aesthetic? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think for me, like my community is, it's a direct link. Like I feel very inspired by them, but they also give me direct feedback all the time. I dress them, they're they're my muses. And um, so for me, it's always a collaborative kind of effort. Like I'll um dress them in something and then they'll say no make it shorter or like (laughs) you know make it more sexy but I think for me what I really love about the scene in general is that there's so many different personalities and we're all so different like you have and that's also like reflected in the garments that I create like you have some which are like hyper feminine then some that are really really masculine but then the kind of the thread that goes through the entire um, collection is the prints, is the color scheme, which is always very like in your face, bold, taking up space, um, kind of, yeah, very much wanting attention. And I think that's something that also really connects with the politics as well of being unapologetic and being present and yeah, demanding attention and um, that's something that I really love in my work and also something that makes it very recognizable as well. Yeah I I like how you use the word unapologetic. I'm interested though the fact that you were educated in in the Netherlands and you're still based Mm -hmm. in the Netherlands. How how international or how international is this aesthetic? Does it spread throughout and uh, does it work? Does this way of thinking work throughout different cities 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, I did a fashion show and um, pop up and things in New York. I did a fashion show in London. I was in Japan for a while. And like, I think the queer community internationally, they get it, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's also, we, we, as, yeah, we have so much in common, like when I arrive at a new location and then I just connect with the ballroom scene there or the queer scene there or the drag scene there. Um, for example, also last year I did a residency in the south of Italy at a queer um, resort and I dressed, <clears throat> sorry, and I dressed all the drag queens and um, I just brought all my clothes with me and they just, it just works, you know, because I feel like also with maybe with the internet and with globalization and everything like that, I feel like um, we, yeah, we're really very interconnected as we're, through our politics, through our vision of what we want to create in the world and like the kind of message that we want to put across there as well. Mm. Coming back to your education, it's, it's pretty clear that to be an autonomous designer, you, more and more you have to be multidisciplinary. Did that did, yeah. did you learn to achieve that or did you learn to think like that at KBK or is it something that evolved with time and you crossing communities? I think a bit of both. I think like in Kabika, they um, they teach you a lot, especially in my department, which was the fashion and textile department. Um, we had classes in photography. We had classes in life drawing every week for three hours, which helps a lot in understanding the body and um, and also drawing techniques, which is like where everything kind of starts with with drawing. Um, we also did a lot of collaborative uh, projects and I was very close with people from fine arts and graphic design. I think it wasn't only my department, but the entire school itself um, was really uh, was really incredible so like the workshops like I was always in the graphic workshop so I learned a lot about like different kind of printing techniques through um, through that uh, as well as yeah like being able to collaborate with different students um, which helped a lot as well I think that's what was really I mean you learn a lot from the teachers but I think you learn the most from your uh, classmates and fellow students yeah and with regards to timing, you seem to be really riding the wave because it's not just about different design disciplines. It's also for design to really take a hold and make the impact that it's it's wanting to make. It has to also cross different academic disciplines from sociology to politics to media to science, which also it seems to me is a, is a wave you're riding and, and making the most of. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also um, that th this is sort of like the driving force of the of the whole kind of thing that I want to put across. And then I feel like the textile in which to kind of connect with people um, and get that message across. I think for me, it's really important that um, my work is very understandable, like, like accessible and like kind of anti-esoteric in a way. And that's also what I love about you know, people can relate to the work in many different ways, like whether they just see the um, colors and they're like, oh, that's really nice color and technique, or it just looks really bright and cheerful and optimistic. Um, or if it's something that they want to dive deeper in and then they um, can talk and discuss and read or, <clears throat> sorry, come to some events and things like that. So uh, that's really that's really important for me, as well, especially with the with the public art now as well, which is um, currently the the newest work that I'm doing. And can you describe a bit about this latest project? Yes, I uh, I wrapped the ferry. I'm gonna get some water. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> mm. the ferry that goes to the pont, the ferry that goes from Central Station to NDSM. Um, I, I wrapped it in my in my prints. And then I have a public art um, exhibition at NDSM, also with the blow up work, which is like this eight meter uh, inflatable planet that I made with all prints on it. And then there's a container and inside there's a, um, a video, a, a three hour video that I made and um, with posters on the outside. And then there's three billboards as well. Sounds That's great. all at NDSM in Amsterdam. Bring glue Amsterdam. Yes, I'm very excited to be showing a tapestry at Hotel Arena. And also there'll be some of my work present at the gallery, Rademacher's Gallery, which is the gallery that represents me also in Amsterdam. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing that.
Uh, and thank you very much for the chat today. Thank you so much as well. And um, I'll see you at Glue. <laughs> see you at Glue. Bye. Bye. <laughs>